Hello and welcome to a video about solving equations with variables on both sides. So um, if you have your work text handy, page 18 is where we're going to be working from. They do have some worked out examples which are really nice. Um, I'm going to leave you to lo look at those at your pleasure if you need to. Alright, jumping into number 2 on page 18. When you have variables on both sides, the first thing you want to do is get those variables together. Now, on this particular problem, I've got one of two options. I could either subtract 5z from both sides, or I could add 5z to both sides. Most people love to stick with the positive things in life, so I will add 5z to both sides. So 7 would equal 17 plus 10z. Now, I can use my inverse operations like I showed you on the lesson, multi-step equations. So here, I'm going to cancel out the 17 first. Since it's positive, I'm going to subtract it. So 7 minus 17 is negative 10. And then I can solve for z by dividing by 10 on both sides. So negative 10 divided by 10 is negative 1. And there's my answer. And we're finished with that one. All right, so sometimes there is simplification that has to happen before you do the step I just showed you. So on this problem, I'm going to have to distribute quite a bit here. So I'm going to multiply 3 fourths with 48, which is going to make 48, which is 36. And 3 fourths times negative 16x is negative 12x. And then I'm going to also distribute the 4 over here. So 4 times 4 is 16 and 4 times 2x is going to be positive 8x. Now I'm going to do what I did before, where I pick one of the two um, variables to bring to the other side. Um, I'm going to do like I did before and simply just choose to add 12x. I could have just as easily subtracted 8x, but it's really personal preference. So 36 is equal to 16 plus 20x now. Now I can subtract 16 from both sides and get that 30, that 20 is equal to 20x. And I can divide by 20 on both sides. If you're a little bit concerned by some of the calculations that I'm doing um, and like, wow, I don't know how he did that, don't, don't be afraid to use a calculator on some of these where you would uh, deal with fractions and stuff. It's totally fine. All right, moving on to number 10. On that same page, uh, you're going to actually uh, want to distribute again. This one is a bit more tricky because you're actually distributing negatives, so you've got to be really careful. 3x is still going to be there. Now, when I do negative 8 times 2x, that's going to be negative 16x. And negative 8 times 3 is going to be negative 24. So I'm being careful to actually distribute the negative with the value. So over here on the right hand side, negative 6 times 2x is negative 12x. And negative 6 times 5 is negative 30. Now I'm ready to simplify a little bit more because I want to do 3x minus 16x, which is negative 13x, before I actually start uh, getting the variables together on the, that are on different sides of the equation. All right, so now that I'm there, um, I've got one of two options. Uh, I could either add 12x to both sides or I could add 13x to both sides. Uh, if I add the 13x, that's going to make for 1x, which is really cool because that means I won't have to divide later. So I'm going to have negative 24 over here equals negative 12x plus 13x is 1x minus 30. You can see I didn't even bother writing the coefficient of 1. All right. Add 30 to both sides. So 6 is equal to x. And on these problems, I've been solving them and, and showing x on the right. You could have just as easily done x is equal to 6 and said that's your answer. So that's symmetric property. Don't panic about it. All right, so here's where unique things start to happen. We're going to have a couple of unique solutions come right along. All right, um, on this problem, we would want to distribute. So I'm going to have 16f plus 24 still on the left. I'm going to distribute the 8 to both the 2f and the 3, and I'm going to get 16f plus 24. Now, this is the identity property that something equals itself exactly. 
Um, in, in fact, you don't have to do this next step. I would already know that's going to, what the answer is going to be. If I'd subtracted 16f, I'd end up with 24 equals 24. Again, identity property. What that means is that you have all real numbers as your solution. F can be any real number, and it would be a, a valid solution to the equation. Uh, there's another way to say this that you'll see is infinitely many solutions, so watch out for that. All right, and here's my last example. Uh, it's going to end up being another unique solution, so let's see what happens. If I go ahead and distribute the 2 on the right-hand side of the equation, 2 times 3x is 6x, 2 times 4 is positive 8. Um, it's not identity property, but you will see that the minus 6x will cancel the x's out of the equation, and you'd be left with negative 5 equals 8. Now, this is not identity property like on the last one. In fact, it is impossible for negative 5 to ever equal 8. So this equation here at the beginning is impossible as well for x, and that means that there is no solution at all for x, since negative 5 cannot equal 8. All right, folks, that wraps up my video. Let me know if you've got any questions. Thank you.